Hi, I'm Guy Spiro here with Is Astrology a Science? The short answer, in my opinion, is no. And I'm going to tell you why astrology is not a science. Astrology cannot be confined to the limitations of science. While there is some science in the process of chart calculation and the positions of planets, astrology is way more than a science. Now, there have been many well-meaning astrologers who over the past several decades have tried to sell astrology as a science, and it's understandable why they would want to. Science is respected by most of society, and they would like to extend that cachet to astrology. They want it to be as valued and respected as is science. But this effort is akin to those from previous generations who proposed a spiritual science, such as, oh, Mary Baker Eddy and the subsequent New Thought Christian writers who believed that since those who follow those teachings can expect reasonably consistent results, they should be viewed as scientific. But trying to put those teachings and things like astrology out there as science strains the boundaries of science to a breaking point and attempts to confine these things into a system of inquiry that they do not fit. It also has the unfortunate result of making these things look even sillier to those of a strictly physical and scientific mind. Astrology cannot be weighed and measured. Look, if astrology is a science, then I or another well-trained astrologer can look at your chart and say, well, bad news, on Thursday you're going to go out and get hit by a red SUV, and then it will invariably happen. If astrology is a science, then we can make specific predictions that will always be right. And this is clearly not the case. Now, we can look at your chart and say something like, mm, on Thursday, it will be a good idea to be careful in traffic, to be mindful in your communication and interactions with others, and otherwise be aware of these kinds of things. That's the best we can really do. Now, why can't we make more specific predictions? This is because of what we can call the law of octaves. Students of mine can tell you that I teach a keyword-oriented essence and octave approach to astrology and the related systems of numerology and tarot, these kinds of things. See, there are many levels, octaves, that an astrological energy can manifest on, perhaps an infinity of levels. But what do I mean by octaves in this context? Think of sitting at a piano keyboard. You have middle C, which, interestingly, is not at the exact middle of the keyboard. But that's another issue. Check out the work of Duncan Lorian, L-O-R-I-A-N, for a great deal more about that. Duncan has some fascinating work. Now, up eight notes from middle C is another C at a higher rate of vibration. Down eight notes is another C at a lower rate of vibration. Up and down the 88 keys of the keyboard, you find all these C's at higher and lower rates of vibration. It is much the same with individual astrological energies, except that you have an infinitely longer keyboard. Now think of the higher octaves as representing more desirable manifestations, and lower octaves as being less desirable manifestations, and you start to get the idea. Take the planet Neptune. At the higher octaves, Neptune represents meditative and mystical states of consciousness. As you come down the octaves, you have recreational drugs, pharmaceutical drugs, on down to the lower octaves where you find illusion and insanity. Yes, the saint and the schizophrenic are using the same essential energy at widely different octaves, at opposite ends of the keyboard. It is important to realize that anyone dealing with insanity or having serious alcohol or drug problems are at heart spiritually oriented people, using this energy at unfortunate octaves and having unpleasant experiences with it. And this points to the true way to recovery. Now Neptune or Mars or any of the planets will always represent the essence of Neptune or Mars 
in any and all places you find them. The question becomes what octave or level is the individual using them on. Here is where the training and skill of the astrologer comes in. How well do you understand the essences and how the client is dealing with them? And how can you help them to make better choices with those energies? We have options, infinite options. And this is why I believe that astrology will never be proved as a science, because there will never be a way to factor in the law of octaves and the infinite choices that are open to us. Astrology can be an invaluable tool for helping people to get a better understanding of themselves and what goes on in this consensual reality we call the world, but it cannot be confined to the realm of science. I will be explaining the law of octaves in much greater detail in subsequent videos along with a great deal more. I'm Guy Spiro and I hope that this has increased your understanding. Thank you.